So we're going to explore the Livingston Surgery Center virtual tour. As it loads up, the first thing that we see is this menu listing out the patient experience from the beginning to the end. Um, and it follows the steps of the patient's journey through the Livingston Surgery Center. So let's go ahead and start at the front entrance. Here we have the front entrance way uh, to the Barnabas Health Ambulatory Care Center. Uh, you've got a couple of different options here that we can investigate. Um, first of all, I would like to show that there's you get these navigation arrows on the bottom, so you could navigate that way and move throughout the tour. Uh, you also have the menu up in the top corner, top left corner, and you can open up and close that menu if you'd like. Um, then you have a couple of other features that are located in the uh, virtual tour. For example, you have this uh, marker here, explains to the patient that there's complimentary valet parking, and also gives them some tips on where to park if they'd prefer to park themselves. I'm going to go ahead and make use of this marker. I'm, if I was a patient and I wanted to know how long it takes to drive to and from this facility, I might go ahead and click that and it automatically populates the Google Maps app with directions on how far it takes to drive from point A to the Livingston Surgery Center. So let's continue on. I'm going to um, I'm going to start off by using the arrows so you can see how that works to navigate. So I'm going to head on in to the main lobby for the facility. And you can see in the top left corner, there's a marker up there where the Livingston Surgery Center is. Let's go ahead and click that. And you can see that it gives you a more detailed explanation of how to find the Livingston Surgery Center. Uh, Certainly would be beneficial if I was a patient visiting here for the first time, uh, so I wasn't stumbling around looking for the place. I can clearly see that it's in the east wing on the second floor. Well, that's good. That means that I need to use these arrows to navigate to the elevator, take the elevator to the second floor, and I get another sign here, west wing to the left, but the Livingston Surgery Center is located right here to the right. Let's go ahead and click that. And the first thing I'm greeted with is this virtual assistant, which is really just a placeholder right now. Um, the intent is to create an interactive video experience where the user can choose between different items, different different menu items on the, in the video itself. And it kind of acts like a very basic AI guide that can help to perform certain simple tasks like set an appointment or maybe some information about preparing for surgery or or whatnot but this can all be changed naturally but this is I put a little dummy placeholder AI virtual assistant in place how can I help And the idea is to make that an interactive video. And the reason I, I like interactive videos so much is because you can also, you can track what they're looking at. You can track the activity within the video and the retention rate uh, with an interactive video is just so much higher. And it's interesting because you can navigate and, and, and you can change the menu options within the video, depending on what it is that they're interested in. So maybe they're not really interested in what to expect. Maybe they want to know more about the procedures themselves. So um, that's why it's beneficial, because you can study the video and the user behavior. So here I am at reception um, and registration, and I've got a couple of different items here. I've got some new patient registration. It takes me to the request an appointment form, where I can fill out some basic information and submit that and request a, an appointment. Um, or if I was a patient and I needed some forms, I have a library of forms that I can select from. Um, let's go ahead and continue on into the waiting room. And when I explore the waiting room, I can see not only is it a beautiful 
seating area, but I also have this interesting question. Is ACL repair right for you? I'm not really sure. Let's find out more about this. Is ACL repair right for you? And uh, it's a survey is what it is. And the customer has an opportunity to answer some basic questions about whether or not ACL repair is right for them. And it doesn't give any actual medical advice and doesn't even really generate a, an automated response uh, to them. The idea is that they include their name, answer some simple questions about uh, their injury and what their concern is. But most importantly is that the we ask them at the end, where should we email the results? Because the idea is really that this form, once completed, will go to a, uh, a live person that would be able to follow up and call and say, hey, I see that you're interested in ACL repair. Um, maybe I can answer some questions and schedule an appointment for a consultation or something like that. So it's just an opportunity to create uh, and generate some more leads uh, within the tour itself and, and to kind of qualify them uh, in, a, in advance. So let's go ahead and switch over to, instead of using the arrows, now I'm going to use this navigation menu um, because I've already kind of been welcomed and have been enjoying my patient experience uh, quite tremendously. And we're going to hop from the waiting room and I'm going to go into the imaging room now where I can find this interesting piece of equipment, but I, I don't really know too much about this equipment. It looks looks expensive. I wonder what it is. I'm going to go ahead and and click, oh, and I can see that it's an EOC Elite 900, uh, complete with all kinds of information about that particular piece of equipment and specifically what it's used for, uh, which is very informative and kind of a fun way for us to uh, share that information. Let's go ahead and jump to another location. I'm going to go into the procedure room. And the idea here is to put the patient at ease when they start to look at some of the more uh, heightened content, such as a procedure room, and they have an opportunity to get, let's get personal, let's meet Dr. Blackwood. Uh, Michelle Blackwood is not only super active with the, um, the health care facility, health. but I'm also, also with the Livingston Surgical Center. She's so one of the main physicians, so I thought it would be appropriate if she took this this moment to or two to tell us a little cancer. bit about breast when you surgery and Many times um, you also have some of the services effect. that she specializes in. So let's go ahead and continue out of the procedure room. I'm going to go over to the preoperative area. Okay, so this is where I go before the surgery. Oh, check that out. How to prepare for my surgery. Now this here... Uh, when I click this, it's going to ask me if I want to download a document. I wanted to show you that you can um, include some of your own content, such as a PDF document. This is a PDF preoperative instructions and explains to them about when to arrive, not to bring any valuables, come accompanied by an adult, uh, that kind of information. So it's a, a chance for you to share and communicate with them and improve um, their their experience. And uh, let's go ahead and continue into the surgery room, which is everyone's always interested in the surgery. They want to see where where does the magic happen. And you can see that they really decked out with some very nice equipment. And I am, I asked this question, what what is arthroscopy of the ankle? What is arthroscopy of the ankle? Let's check that out and learn a little bit more about that procedure. And this explains in detail what the procedure this is all about, how it's done, problems in your and ankle. gives With the user just the a little bit more detail and maybe puts them a little bit more at ease um, as far as what's involved in this kind of a procedure. But most importantly, I'd like to point out that just in this virtual tour alone now, I've now discussed three different procedures. So the point is that the patient may be here, going to the Livingston Physicians Center, Surgery Center for one procedure, but they actually are being uh, presented with some other procedures that are available. Um, so let's go ahead and continue that tour to the next area, which is the post-operative care. This is a this is a, a very 
interesting area here because this gives you a little bit of detail of what to do afterwards post-op wound care and it's a doctor taking a moment or two to explain how to properly uh, treat and care for, for a wound and to change the bandages of the wound. Um, so it's, it's very, could be very helpful to someone that maybe wants to know a little bit more about what to expect. Um, I'm going to continue on to the recovery room. Recovery room here, I'm greeted with a, an army of recovery beds that look so comfy. But even more importantly here, I have a couple of other informative little highlights. I can choose this one here, which gives me the visitor and guardian policy and explains exactly what to expect, um, who's allowed in, when they're allowed in, um, and whatnot. And then also I have this what to expect next, which is just a little bit, a little tidbit uh, to add a little bit of personality to it. Uh, and it's just an RN explaining that she's going to be following up with a phone call. There's a couple of check-in points um, afterwards. So uh, not to worry that they're going to be well watched after the surgery. And it's, that, again, is really just the kind of experience that really gives someone um, a more enhanced journey and a better experience. Um, so I'm going to continue on to the last item now, which is the acute recovery, um, which I didn't even really understand what acute, I mean, I had guessed what acute recovery was, but I wasn't really positive, so I had to look it up um, just so I had the proper definition, and I thought that that would be something that I'm, I can't be the only one that doesn't understand exactly what acute th therapy is, uh, recovery is. So I made sure that I included that information to kind of explain that a little bit so someone can kind of understand uh, what that is so if the terminology is used with uh, a visitor or with the patient itself they might understand a little bit more about it so that is an example of the virtual tour um, as i would imagine it and how it could be put to use to its fullest